Welcome back to the shop guys. Today I'm going to show you exactly how I use HP Tuner Scanner to give the C5 a quick checkup. Toys for life. Many of you already know that HP Tuners is an excellent product to tune your C5, but did you know it's also an excellent diagnostic scanner? It's kind of like a human being getting an EKG to see how everything's running on the computer side. So let's get started, follow along, and I'll walk you through exactly the things that I look at when I'm given the C5 her monthly checkup. First up, we're going to take the HP Tuner's interface cable and we attach it to the OBD2 port directly underneath the steering wheel and the dash. Next, we're going to take the other end of the interface cable, plug it into the USB port, and fire up the laptop. Go ahead and open up the scanner. And I'm going to go to the layout that I created for this. And that arranges everything on our screen the way that you want it. Okay, let's start scanning here. The first thing I want to really point out, um, this has already been warmed up a little bit obviously, but um, you want to take a look and make sure your oxygen sensors are moving up and down quite a bit. They hover around 450 millivolts is stoichiometric ratio at idle. And these should be moving just like they are, going a plus and minus, keeping it right at stoichiometric ratio. Uh, I want to buzz through some of these parameters. Speed, obviously, RPM, mass airflow in hertz. That's the mass airflow sensor measuring the amount of air coming in the motor. Inlet air temperature, 113 degrees as it enters uh, the intake manifold. Engine coolant temperature, MAP sensor. This is a vacuum, obviously, inside the manifold. If it was wide open throttle, naturally aspirated, it'd be closer to 100 or so, depending on what uh, elevation you are above sea level. And if it was uh, a boosted engine, it'll go above the 100. Um, I don't have a two bar MAP sensor, so mine just maxes out at like 104 here in Minnesota. Horsepower is a calculated figure based on torque and RPM. Commanded Lambda. Lambda is just a fancy way of looking at different fuels that, with a universal language. Doesn't matter if it's gasoline, ethanol, methanol. Lambda of 1 is stoichiometric ratio. Above 1 is lean and below 1 is rich. And you get to know what the values mean the more you work with it. Um, spark. Air fuel ratio commanded. I'm at 12 and a half to 1 stoich for this fuel. And you might say, what the heck? Uh, it's because I'm running E33 in this car. It's supercharged and the E33 gives me the extra octane and cooling I need to stay out of detonation. Uh, if you don't know what all that means, that's fine, but um, just know that it's I'm running E33, so my storage is 12 and a half to one. Yours would be, be you know, for regular gasoline, around 12, uh, 14 and a half to one or so, depending on if you've got a splash of ethanol programmed in or not. Then we've got throttle position sensor, which measures when you hit the gas with your foot pedal, what percentage depressed you are. Knock retard, that's a big one, especially for forced induction. Knock is the knock sensors of the engine actually hearing the engine knock and detonate, which is very harmful, especially under boost. So um, I like to look at that one always when I'm driving, when we do a road test later. Uh, oxygen sensors, again, these are the right and left side. 450 is stoich, um, above is rich, and below is lean. They're very accurate telling you if you're above or below stoich, but that's about it. They can't really measure the um, wide open throttle air fuel ratio other than tell you that you're on the rich side of stoich. Injector duty cycle, short and long term fuel trims. These are important. Um, you want these all to be close to like negative one if at all possible. There's a lot of theory behind it, but the main thing you'd want to look for if you were just scanning your vehicle is if the long term trims were, this is up for debate, but if they were north of 10, plus or minus 10, that might be indicative of some sort of a problem where your computer is really having to compensate for a bad injector or bad fuel or an intake leak or something like that. The other thing you might want to look at um, if you were just getting started with this would be your engine coolant temp. So mine's at 205 right now. We can go into vehicle controls and I'm going to go into system fans and turn them on and I'm going to speed this up a little bit and you should see this drop pretty quickly here and this will just um, make sure that the fans are doing a good job being able to cool the motor or you could wait for the computer to turn your fans on uh, make sure it does at the appropriate time that the fans come on and the uh, temperatures drop you could monitor that here as part of your checkup to make sure your cooling system is functioning as uh, as tuned to do so 
And as you can see, the coolant temps drop nicely. The other thing that, um, there's all kinds of diagnostics you can do in here. I'm just gonna scratch the tip of the iceberg. But I can go into um, engine, fuel, and you can go, let's say you're having a miss in one of your cylinders. You can just feel a miss. To try to figure out which cylinder is, the quickest way for me would be to have it idling like this. And I'm gonna disable the fuel injector for one cylinder at a time and see how the engine responds. I'm going to freeze this for a second. Notice when I disable fuel injector number four, oxygen sensor uh, number two goes all the way down to a very lean condition, eight millivolts. It's because I shut the fuel off to injector number four so it wouldn't fire, but obviously the air and the oxygen still comes through the engine, goes through the exhaust, and the oxygen sensor thinks, holy cow, this is super lean. So I just wanted to point that out. And I can both hear it and feel it when I do this. And so let's just say when I got to number five, I didn't feel or hear any difference at all. That would tell me cylinder number five has got an issue. And that of course would tell me to look closer at cylinder number five's fuel, spark, and compression. Guys, that's gonna do it for part number one of the HP Tuner scanner review and analysis. In part two, we'll dig a little bit more into diagnostics, and then we'll do some part throttle driving and uh, analyze the scans and how we tell if the, if the engine is running as intended by the program. And then we'll, do, uh, we'll hook up the wideband and do some 130 mile an hour runs at the track and analyze the, uh, the fueling and the spark and just take a look at some of the things that I look at. If there's anything you want to see in particular about the HP Tuner Scanner, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll look for them and hopefully I can get some of your comments into part two as well. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please, as always, remember to share, like, and subscribe.